Welcome to the Brew Crew Review Podcast, the show by fans for fans of your Milwaukee Brewers. Welcome back to another edition of the Brew Crew Review. This is Vince Travato hosting here today. Joined on the set by Mr. Scott Bartell. Scott, how are you today? Uh, doing great. Great Brewer win at the time of taping. Yeah, Scott, how's your Memorial Day weekend going? Uh, so far, so good. Um, actually, I'm in Las Vegas, well, and it's been surprisingly cold. It's like we're lucky to hit 70 degrees this week. So uh, it's been wow. kind of interesting, but everybody out here loves it because it's not 100. So what about you? Well, first, <laughs> yeah, things are beautiful uh, out here in, in Washington, D.C., and, and uh, it's been in the 90s uh, here the last couple of days, and I know that for all of our friends back in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, that they've had great weather uh, back home as well, so that's, that's good to hear. Finally getting some real baseball and real summer weather uh, with the Memorial Day turn here. So, yeah, um, well, that's great. Why don't we just jump right into it, Scott? Uh, the Brewers have... Um, but it ended on a high note. We're taping this on Sunday evening after the game is concluded. Uh, ended on a high note today with a great performance by uh, Brewers pitcher Brandon Woodruff. Uh, he threw a – was sort of a perfect game through six, uh, giving up one – he had, it happened to be a home run, so he lost the shutout bit as well um, before being cold uh, after the eighth inning. Uh, Matt Elbers closed out the game, a 9-1 to Brewers victory, five home runs, matching a season high on the, on the uh, game today. Uh, ben Gamble had two home runs. Scott, let's uh, let's talk a little bit about today's game and then the uh, the week that was here that just that just wrapped up. Yeah, let's start with the positives. I mean, you couldn't ask for much more out of a game today, right? I mean, how many Brewer home runs were there? I I lost track after like five. Yeah, there were five. That's uh, that's what I was just saying. And tied a tied a season high mark today with their five home run performance. And again, Ben Gamble had two. Uh, yes, Mike Grandal had one. Christian Yelich, of course, had another one. Of um, course. But, yeah, there were five overall. Yeah, five overall home runs today by the Brewers and a strong offensive showing even besides just the home runs. Uh, Brandon Woodruff, of course, had t- two more hits hitting better than some guys off of our bench. Um, do, you, do you view this as a sign that the Brewers' offense is really starting to click and come together? I really hope so. I mean, uh, this is a team that has proven, obviously, that they they are very capable of hitting the long ball, but it's just the uh, uh, table setters and getting on before that, just too many solo shots, unfortunately. Um, so that kind of all-or-nothing offense isn't what you look for. You kind of look for a little bit of consistency, I guess. But, um, you know, I mean, this team has shown that they can, uh, if – if needed, they can, you know, scratch across runs and manufacture runs. It's just not their strong suit. Um, so, you know, when they're going right, they're hitting home runs, and that's what they did today. Yeah, and, they, and, and you know, we did start with the positive note, but we did lose the series, unfortunately, to the Phillies, and the offense had kind of disappeared in games one and two. So, you know, I think that, I think that like many teams around baseball, the Brewers are, are looking for a measure of consistency. I, I still think that overall our offense is really strong. Um, particularly when we're doing it without guys like Travis Shaw and guys like Jesus Aguiar, who were such big pieces of last year's very successful uh, offense in 2018. Um, so getting to that point, Travis Shaw is, is you know, technically on the disabled list with a wrist injury. He has been uh, sent down to the minor leagues now for a rehabilitation assignment. Keston Hero was recalled, um, you know, several weeks ago now and is playing fairly well. Um, Travis in his first few games, back on his rehab assignment though I believe and you can have one of your interns uh, pull up the stats here Scott but I think that he was started he started off like one for 17 with a number of K's and sorry about the noise in the background I'm outside National Stadium reporting on this uh, fine Sunday here today in in, in Washington but um, Travis Shaw I believe was started off his minor league rehab assignment one for 17. Scott what do you think is, is leading to, to Shaw's struggles and um, I mean, what what needs to happen to this guy this year? He, he's been so consistent, 30-plus home runs the last several seasons for the Brewers, and, um, you know, such a major piece of the offense, a left-handed bat. Um, what does Travis Shaw need to do to turn it around, and, and do you see that happening yet in 2019? Um, I, I personally just think that he is just banged up still, and he's tried to, you know, fight through some of these injuries, and um, it hasn't worked out. And, you know, I applaud him for that, but at the same time, like uh, – we everybody knew that something kind of had to be done at some point, and so now he's gonna, you know, hopefully rest up and now, you know, rehab a little bit and 
see what he can come up with. I mean, obviously the one for 17 is not a good thing, but wrist injuries are rough, man. I mean, that's the, the biggest problem with it is that you can throw off your timing. You know, you can, you're definitely going to get your power sapped. So um, you just kind of hope that he's able to, uh, you know, find his old swing and, you know, take his time and come back and, and help us out. Yeah, and that certainly would be ideal. I mean, the Brewers could definitely still use that power threat. Um, you know, Kesson here, I think, has filled in pretty admirably at second base so far, especially given that it's his first uh, time at all in the big leagues. And, um, you know, he's had a few rough games, a few overs, but he's also managed to hit a couple home runs already. Um, he is seeing the ball, it seems like, fairly well. I think his batting average is right now in the 280 range. Um, and, again, you can have your, your intern, uh, Stephanie, look into that. But if you want to, um, you know, look at a guy who's – who's definitely part of the Brewers' long-term plans, that's Keston Hira, but many would say that Travis Shaw is as well. With Mike Kinstock as being a free agent again after the 2019 season is done, you know, you'd have to think that Travis is still a definite part of the Brewers' long-term plans at this point. So to, you know, not have him really hitting much, you know, at all, and it's almost June 1st, has got to be problematic for the Brewers' front office. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely not something that they're super thrilled about, but, I mean, when you think of it this way, um, if he is part of it, uh, part of our future, that is, uh, maybe this leads to a, a modest contract if he, let's say, I don't know, comes back and heats up around the all-star break and only has half a good year and half a terrible year. Uh, maybe that makes his, his extension a little bit more modest. But um, bringing up Mike Moustakis is, uh, is definitely a good point because, uh, you know, he's obviously second on the team in home runs. He's got 13 already, and uh, he's doing a heck of a job being that power left-handed bat in our lineup. Um, which things mm-hmm. have been um, occasionally uh, Grandal a little bit too, but um, definitely uh, Mustakis has is, taken over that spot and been able to solidify the left-handed power portion of the lineup. Yeah, no, that's a that's a that's a great point. And let's uh, let's step back a second here and talk a little bit about sort of a bigger level picture right now. The Brewers were. Um, you know, again, a, a week or so, not even a week yet away from, from June 1st. The Brewers are within two games, the first place in the division. Obviously, the team started off incredibly hot in uh, April. It had slumped for a bit, started to play really well again. It's kind of been mediocre down the past week. Um, what are your thoughts so far on the first couple months of the Brewers season? So far, I mean, it's it's a, it's a little bit hard to say. I mean, I guess you look at it now where – um, like you said, we're a couple games out. We're what six? I think six games over 500 at, at the time of the taping. So right, right around there. Yep. Um, yep. I, I feel like this is a team that hasn't played their best ball yet. Um, I mean, when you look at all statistical categories, like um, I, well, let's just look at um, our fielding is has been really good, really solid throughout the year. Uh, but our, our hitting and pitching, just in general, is kind of just mid pack. And so mm-hmm. when, you, when you look at that, that should be a team that's around 500. So considering that we're, you know, six games over 500 at this point, um, maybe we should be pretty happy with that. Yeah, and let's also point out a couple things and not just to, you know, bleed the Brewers Navy Blue here. But, you know, the, I think the Brewers schedule has been one of the toughest, if not the toughest, in the National League uh, up to this point. The first couple months of the season, it had been talked about by – by fans, you know, as soon as the set schedule was released last September or October for 2019, it became, you know, a, 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 a point that people were discussing, which was, you know, here, here's a team that's not getting many off days the first two months of the year. It's playing a ton of really great competition, a lot of interdivision games, um, decent amount of road games. So I think that the schedule does get a little bit easier, and that doesn't guarantee a better record, but I think that goes in our favor. Um, you know, we've also had an injury or two um, that I think is, is making a big impact, Travis Shaw being one of them. But even guys like Christian Yelich has been out for, um, you know, a total of like 10 or so games between two separate little uh, back flare-ups that he's had. Um, we haven't had anywhere near perfect health in the bullpen, obviously, with Corey Knable getting injured in spring training and missing the entire year. Bobby Wall being another reliever that's going to be out for the entire season, most likely. Um, Jimmy Nelson still hasn't made an appearance in the major leagues yet uh, since 2017. So this team has faced, I think, they're not only a fair share, but probably an exorbitant amount of injuries as well. And to be at this point in the year and to be this many games over 500 with the division, obviously, still very much within reach. Um, I, you know, I don't think that that's all bad news either. I know that there's some fans who are a little pessimistic that we're not 
you know, in first and just running away with the division. But it seems like there's been a lot of adversity that this team has already faced. Yeah, no, absolutely. And just looking ahead at that, um, you know, at our upcoming schedule, I mean, we have, um, well, here, I'll just, I'll just start rattling them off, you know, not, no offense to any yeah. teams or whatever, but like Twins, Pirates, Marlins, Pirates, uh, just yep. a two-gamer with the Astros, uh, Giants, Padres, Reds, Mariners, and Pirates again. So that's, that's us through the end of June. It looks to me like that's um, just looking at the, the whole body of work there. Uh, there's there's definitely an opportunity there to to get a couple games. I, I, that's not that hard of a schedule, especially compared to you know everything that we've gone through in the first two months, like you stated. Yeah, let, and let's hope so. I I think that this next week is going to be a you know I'm not going to call it a rough week, but I do think that there are some challenges with it. First of all, you're on the road, but second, um, you know you're playing a very hot Twins team uh, at their home ballpark, at Target Field in the Twin Cities, and then. Um, You're going to go to Pittsburgh, and it's weird because, you know, the Brewers are definitely a better team than the Pittsburgh Pirates and have been for a long time. But it seems like the last few seasons, um, PNC Park has not been uh, a a place where Brewers, (laughs) uh, where the Brewers have been able to pick up any uh, any ground at all uh, in the division. And in fact, I I remember us getting swept in, I think it was a five game series last year, right before the All Star break. because there was a double header in there, and uh, <laughs> yeah. it, 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 one of the, certainly the low point in a very good season last year, maybe outside of the NLCS loss at Los Angeles. But um, you know, so we can't take anything for granted this week. I totally agree with you. After that, though, that the schedule gets a little easier. Yeah, it's definitely shaping up to be. Um, I hope anyway to be a pretty good month. And and actually, I think in the next thirty days, I think we have like five off days too. So uh, not only that, but you're going to be able to. You know, hopefully, you know, use uh, the people like Hater and stuff like that a, a little bit more often um, in those close games. So that's that's going to be helpful too. Yeah, no, I, I see good things yeah. ahead. Yeah, I do too. And let's let's talk about our starting rotation a little bit because those off days will play a role. So um, I think that one thing you saw in the first couple months that maybe will improve now going forward is the fact that without any off days, the first starting rotation literally had to go back to back to back to back. You really couldn't spell or set anybody that might have been struggling a bit in the starting rotation. Um, so far, we've seen uh, a guy like Shasin maybe not pitch up to expectations. He's been okay. I wouldn't say he's been awful, but he certainly hasn't been um, the, the U.S. Shasin of 2018 either. Right. Um, and But then on the other hand, you've got a guy like Brandon Woodruff, who pitched either in the minor leagues or mostly in the bullpen last year for the Brewers. And so he pitched great in the bullpen. I don't think anybody was necessarily expecting him to come into the rotation and pitch as well as he has so far. Um, so that's certainly a bright point. And then, you know, uh, what, what are your thoughts, I guess, overall on the starting rotation? We've had mixed results from Freddie Peralta. Uh, Chase Anderson has also suffered an injury and been a little inconsistent. Um, and then there's Zach Davies, who has got the most wins in the National League and um, who, if the season were to end today, would probably be a, a contender, at least, for the National League Play Young Award. What are, what are your thoughts on the uh, state of the Brewers starting rotation at this point, how those off days might affect that? Um, I... <sighs> I think the the Brewer rotation, I don't see a skipping a fifth person necessarily, I guess, if that's um, what people are thinking. Um, There's a chance that maybe uh, Chase Anderson could get skipped. Uh, That could probably happen. I mean, he didn't even have a spot in the rotation on opening day, so that's definitely a possibility. Um, But when you look at that, um, I guess we should also point out that Woodruff is is the lone – he's the last man standing of our our three young – pitchers uh between him and um um and then also we had uh Peralta who definitely struggled and then uh Burns who's now in a in a bullpen role again um and he really really struggled so um it it was interesting I mean I I think a lot of people wouldn't have picked Woodruff as the guy that would be the last man standing and to pitch so well you know moving from that bullpen role to a starting role but he's he's proven everybody wrong he's done an amazing job so far um, and then I guess yeah. uh, Zach Davies is really, really beaten expectations. Uh, Gio is is doing just fine. He's he's nowhere near. Oh the yeah, I forgot spot. to mention. Forgot to mention Gio. Sorry. Yeah. Yes. No, no, he's doing phenomenal. So um, it, it could be that if if Chassin struggles a little bit, I wouldn't be surprised if we skipped him once in the rotation. You could, in theory, I guess, um, take Chase out of the rotation, but. I mean, these guys are only throwing on typically five innings a game and 80 pitches, so I don't see the need to skip them unless they're really struggling. 
Yeah, that's and that's a fair point. And it is interesting, again, just going back a few short months, it really hasn't even been two months yet. The the Brewers were, you know, lining up with these three young guys in the rotation. And Corbin Burns is really interesting to me. I know that he's got a ton of talent. He's been a guy who's been great out of the bullpen in twenty eighteen, but um, mixed results this year as both a starter and a reliever. Um, had been sent to Triple A San Antonio for a while. Um, had a chance to see him down there um, a few weeks ago. But it, it's it's amazing the amount of home runs that he's giving up. And and um, I'm sure you can have your intern look up the stat. But the amount of of home runs that this guy is giving up is, is like major league record worthy. It's it's crazy. And he had another outing recently out of the bullpen where that was also the case. So it wasn't just him being a starter, maybe not preparing for games in a certain way. Um, so I, what do you attribute Corbin Burns' struggles to, and, and when do you think we might see him turn it around? I, I do think he will with that talent level, but um, I, I know that a lot of Brewer fans are, are kind of getting a little nervous about Corbin. So I, I would really have to kind of go back and break down and see, you know, what pitches are, are getting smashed out of the park. But unfortunately, yeah, like you were saying, oh, by the way, side note, we don't have any more interns. Um, a couple of them went to work at the Monkey Brewers ticket office. Tungus, I wish you well there. Um, but, no, uh, they're, hopefully they do better there than they did here. So we're just kind of winging it on our huh. own and hopefully getting new, uh, huh. yeah, hopefully getting new interns uh, soon. But, yeah, Corbin Burns. Okay. I had Corbin. to I had to fire one of them on Friday, just so you know. I don't know if you got the memo. But yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. That was the last one. We have none left. So that was it. No, oh, okay. But, okay. Yeah. Huh. Um, yeah, 14 <laughs> home runs. Uh, Corbin Burns has given up now in what, like 31 innings or something like that. That's, yeah. um, yep. That is really, really kind of insane. And, and <laughs> we were just talking about uh, yeah. Julius uh, Chassin. He's given up 11 already this year, too. So uh, the long ball has definitely been biting him. I think Corbin Burns' biggest problem is it seems like he's just falling behind in the count a lot more often. Um, yep. it's not even that his pitches are like way off the plate or anything like that, but he's just like barely missing. He's nibbling too much. Then he has to groove a fastball. And, um, yep. you know, if 96 goes right down the middle, like it's not that hard to turn on it. So he has a lot of pitches in his repertoire, right. but he's got to get that first pitch strike. Yeah. And I don't, I don't think anybody's going to argue with his stuff. I mean, he's a guy that's been heralded as a pitching prospect for at least the last, you know, two, three seasons, you know, throughout the Brewers system. Um, I do think that maybe there's a little bit of a different sort of pressure point when number one, you start the year with the team, um, unlike last season where he came up in July and or June, whenever it was, you know, in, into a bullpen role. Um, but this year he was kind of given the nod right away in spring training and said, you know, that he was going to lock down one of those spots. So maybe there's a different sort of pressure that's in place for a guy, especially a younger guy trying to earn his first you're trying to get through the league for, you know, his first full season. Um, so maybe that's part of it. I, I don't know. I don't know how much the mental side plays um, at that level. So that would, I, I think, be an interesting topic for maybe a future show and after we see a little bit more out of Corbin, you know, coming out of the pen versus him being a starter. Because, again, I don't think that his stuff has changed. I think that his stuff has, you know, been very good, and I think it will continue to be good. It's just a matter of harnessing a lot of that. And like you said, not getting behind in counts because, when he does, like any pitcher, he's going to have to make the perfect pitch then to bounce back and not walk guys. So, you know, you're then grooving a fastball all of a sudden. It's, you know, a two-run home run instead of a walk. So there has to be a point where Corbin is comfortable with his stuff to be able to throw something maybe other than a fastball with that, uh, with, with that, with trying to get back in uh, a good spot in the count. Yeah, and we even saw, like, I mean, arguably our best pitcher and Josh Hader threw um, – at the beginning of the year, he was basically throwing nothing but fastballs, and that was pretty much it. And then uh, after he got stung a couple times, uh, we started saying, hey, maybe we should, um, you know, start, you know, throwing those secondary pitches once in a while uh, again. And, and I think that that's helped him too. I mean, it's really hard to get by on, you know, just one pitch, and it's really hard to pitch in the majors when you fall behind the count. and you're just not going to be successful that way, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, no, I, I think he's going to bounce back. I'm not too worried about it. Yeah. And well, and then let's talk a little bit about on the other side of things, be a little bit more positive. Um, Brandon Woodruff. I know that our, our co-host uh, Craig, who cannot be on today because he is at a wedding is a very popular man. Um, doesn't like Woodruff all that much or wanted him traded, but I tend to think that Woodruff stuff is really valuable. I, I, 
I had at one point wanted him to continue to pitch out of the bullpen because he was such, he was so valuable in that role, but he's obviously been able to make that transition back to the starting rotation and his pitching lights out. I mean, this is a guy who's been successful really since he got recalled by the Brewers uh, in August of last season, um, right around the time that the rosters expanded. He pitched in a bullpen role and was outstanding throughout the playoffs. Um, and then, again, this year, uh, starting rotation. I mean, his numbers are otherworldly. And, again, this game that he just got done pitching today has just been outstanding. Yeah, and it kind of um, makes me think, like, I mean, when you look at both of these guys in um, um, in Woodruff and then um, Burns, um, you, you kind of have, like, both these guys start off with, like, a 95-mile-an-hour-plus fastball. And that's kind of where mm-hmm. it all begins for them. And the only difference that, that I see as far as execution right now is just that uh, maybe Woodruff's fastball is just a little bit more deceptive or it's got a little bit of wrinkle at the end of it. Like it, there were so many people that would, they would describe Ben sheets and say like, this guy's got a fastball and you think you're just going to smash it. And then you swing and you don't. And like, it's just it dro- uh, yeah, it drop out from a little bit of yeah. late action. Yep. And maybe that's yep. what's going on. Cause Burns, Burns fastball, I think anyway, it is a little straight. I mean, he, when he, throws a fastball and you know a fastball is coming um you're probably gonna be able to hit it yeah but because he's got that yeah, yeah. slider in his back pocket you know people are usually a tick late on it and so um i don't know it's just um to me anyway that seems like kind of the main difference between the two and i guess that makes me think that that again that burns is going to be able to bounce back and, and get back to form well and then there's a guy like Freddie Peralta who also has a great fastball, but um, I think his issue tends to be number one, he doesn't have a good third pitch. And number two, um, the control issues. The control aspect of Freddie has been his downfall so far in the big leagues, and he's got games where he just looks literally unhittable, and then other times where he's like uh, wild and all over the zone. What do you think about Freddie? Well, he definitely doesn't have, you know, the fastball of the other two guys, but um, he tends to locate it well and it seems to be a pitch that looks really hittable to hitters and he gets those guys to chase i mean nine those those like 90 mile an hour fastballs that he throws that you know they they look like they're gonna just show up belt high and then they just stay up in the zone and people are swinging at him it almost reminds you of like a doug davis when you know he was just blowing people away with like pitchers that were uh, uh pitches that were like shoulder high Yeah, I I remember that with Doug. Yeah, but I don't know. I mean, Freddie's definitely, you know, he was one of those uh, three lottery tickets um, that we got. Oh, I can't even remember the guy that we traded now for him. <laughs> uh, Adam, Adam, Adam Lind. Adam Lind, yeah, there he is. Um, he was one of yep. the three lottery tickets, and so far um, he's the winner. So, yeah, no, I, I, it'll be interesting to see what kind of role they have for him in the future, but – um, right now, it's just um, you know, he wasn't quite there, and you know we'll see where where he is. You know, hopefully by the All Star break. All right, and and uh, Scott, I don't know if you're well. I guess we don't have an intern. I don't know how we're doing on time, but um, to wrap it up really quickly on the starting rotation discussion, you know, we kind of know what we have in Geo, um, but but you know Zach Davies, another guy that, that I know uh, Craig isn't a huge fan of, but I think <laughs> you, you look at him this year, and it's just outstanding is Zach Davies just kind of putting together his full potential or what's going on with with Zach Davies this year and why has he been um literally one of the best pitchers in the National League um Zach Davies I think um his well his best pitch I think is his change up and he does a really good job of locating it like he he can throw it and changes are usually a little bit tricky because um it's got to look like a fastball but it's got to hit for a strike at the bottom of the zone. If you leave them up, they get smashed and he's hitting like just right at, at that knee high level. And he's doing a really good job with it. Uh, I think that being able to control that pitch sets up absolutely everything else for him because I mean, Zach Davis will tell you, he doesn't have the overpowering fastball that a lot of other people have, but um, you know, he, he's locating. And so as long as he's able to do that, uh, he still has, you know, a good overall pitching repertoire. Um, so, yeah, as long as he's locating, he's going to be able to do just fine, and, and he's proving it. Yeah, he, he really is. He's putting together a, a really nice season so far this year. Um, 
Let's transition really quick uh, to the other bit of Brewers news here in the last couple of weeks, and we've got a little bit of time to assess. Um, our inside anonymous source, Tom Carter, gave us the information that Keston Hero was going to be recalled from AAA San Antonio. Um, Keston's played in a good handful of games now. Um, what do you think of Keston's first couple of weeks in the big league? Some of some of what he does is, you know, Keston here, you look at him and he, he is an amazing athlete. He absolutely can just sting the hell out of the ball when he connects. Um, it's no doubt that, like, I mean, it was just a couple of years ago that he was the most polished bat in the draft, and now here he is up in the bigs already. Uh, so that's pretty phenomenal. I mean, when you look at that one home run he hit, I thought, oh, that's probably going to get in the corner, maybe two hop the ball, and it was out. Like, he just yeah, absolutely destroyed shot. that ball. And when you look at that and say, wow, this guy – can flat out hit. Uh, unfortunately, you know, he's still striking out at about I, probably a 38% clip. So um, he's definitely uh, still getting fooled a little bit and adjusting to big league pitching. But overall, I mean, this guy's got the talent. Yeah, no, I, I tend to agree. I think he's going to be here for a long time. I mean, he may go back to the minors at some point this season, but just generally in the Brewers' long term uh, plan. So, well, that's great. Well, we missed, uh, we missed. Uh, Craig, we missed Chad here on the set today, Scott, but glad we could catch up and talk a little Brewers baseball. Um, thanks again to all of our Twitter followers and, and uh, fans on social media. Get, give us a follow. Uh, you can follow us at BrewCreview1 on Twitter or send us your email uh, or questions via email. We'll get to them soon. Podcast with, with an S at gmail.com. Um, anything else for our fans here today, Scott? Uh, no, I think that's it. Uh, should be... Like I said, a great month. Uh, hopefully we'll be back with you next week and we'll be able to talk more Brewers. And uh, Boy, I mean, and if you think that, remember I was saying before, I was like, oh, six games, we haven't played our best ball yet or whatever. Wow. We should probably at least bring up, like, boy, to the Cardinals, man, they've been sliding. I mean, they're, they're only a game over 500 right now. I mean, that's a team that should be that, – that is better on paper than that. And so, you know, if you think things yeah. are bad, well – that's not, yeah, it's interesting because they had such a bad half of a season last year, bad enough where they had to fire Mike Matheny and uh, bring in a new manager, but really turned around in the second half, and then all of a sudden they're kind of back to playing in those uh, same same sort of ways as they did in the first half of last year. So I, I don't know what it's going to take in St. Louis, but I'm okay with it right now too. Well, I think if um, if Paul Goldschmidt and Christian Yelich want to battle for the MVP, the Brewers and Cardinals are just going to have to play each other every game for the rest of the year, and they're both going to have to put <laughs> Oh, Brian, <laughs> Mr. Bellinger may have something to say about that MVP discussion as well, but yes, uh, point taken. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. Um, Can you believe that guy's hitting? He's still hitting over 400. It's ridiculous. I know it's not. It's a crazy, crazy year right now. But uh, hopefully, the Brewers have a good road trip this week uh, in Minnesota and then Pittsburgh. Um, forgot to add before we sign off here. I am planning on being up at the Brewers and Pirates series uh, in Pittsburgh this upcoming weekend. So we'll hopefully, bring you a lot of uh, live coverage uh, on social media for that and. Uh, and in fact, our next taping on uh, Sunday of next week, if we don't get one out midweek this week, I'll be doing it from Pittsburgh. So um, that should be good as well. So looking forward to that. Last time I was in PNC Park, they had a chance to finish 500 for the first time in forever. Um, and they dropped the last two games of the year and did not make it. And I oh. listened, yeah, I listened to somebody on his cell phone just screaming at his friend about how upset he was. And I just thought, wow, like, these are really passionate fans. Like, I mean, they haven't had a winning season. But, that, like, I, I just remember, like, that Craig, yeah, Craig Bruce, Mueller? There. No, it wasn't Craig. No. Was that? <laughs> no, it, <laughs> it was might have been Craig. me on the other end, actually. It's <laughs> okay. Yeah, um, it's pretty possible. But um, I will also <laughs> say um, what, I, what one of my friends told me, and they said, uh, go out behind the center field uh, fence. There's a concession stand there and get a – barbecued pulled pork sandwich and you won't regret Ooh. so there's your good to know thanks god you've always got your food tip of the week that's awesome um the last time i was at pnc park was in 2008 with craig actually so that was the last uh, last time for a brick review trip and matt wise uh, i believe appeared in that game so that's wow. how long ago it was but um yeah very excited to get back to the stadium uh, as you may know i live in washington dc so it's, a, it's about a yeah, i think a three and a half or four hour drive from here so it's not bad uh, so looking forward to, to catching on some Brewers baseball here on the East Coast. Well, kind of the East Coast. 
Yeah, no, it's a beautiful stadium. So. Uh, you know, good fans. I mean, I don't dislike. I mean, really, I think the Pirates might be my favorite team that isn't the Brewers in the NL Central. So, but maybe it's yeah, yeah, they're not good. Maybe that's why I don't know. That being said, as as, as uh, excited as I am about seeing the Brewers, I'm a, a little nervous about going to Pittsburgh and just being witness to the Brewers in Pittsburgh. It just hasn't gone well for us. And again, apologies about the noise behind me. I'm outside of a baseball stadium. So there are, <laughs> are some noises here on the streets. I'm outside of the Nationals uh, Stadium where they just played the Miami Marlins. But um, apologies about that. Uh, but anyways, uh, yeah, I'm excited, but also a little nervous about Changing what happens at PNC. <laughs> well, I mean, since the Brewers moved to the National League, I remember PNC. Well, since PNC came to be, I guess um, it was basically a house of horrors for the Brewers. And then there was like a stretch of a couple of years where, like, yeah, we're, we would beat dominated. Pittsburgh. We we could beat them anywhere in the world, and it wouldn't matter. Yep. And now yep. it's kind of regressed back to sort of becoming a house of horrors again. It's not quite there yet, but hopefully we'll be able to turn it around this year. Yeah, let's hope 2019 is the magic year to, to get back to winning ways in Pittsburgh. So, well, we'll, we'll do what we can. Brew Crew will be on the scene in Pittsburgh this weekend. Looking forward to it. And uh, and uh, let's hope for a good week of Brewers baseball. I'd oh, like to be in first place by the end of the week, Scott. That's the goal. So Yeah, and not only happens, that, but, but um, you know, with the recent um, uh, the recent uh, elimination of the Bucks from the playoffs, they had a great season. It was a good run. But now it's up to the Brewers again and for – them to become the first uh, major Milwaukee sport to bring a championship home to Milwaukee in my lifetime. So be, it'd be That's really right. nice if uh, we could do that this year. It'd be nice. Hey, let's, let's do it. We'll, we'll see you at the world series, Scott. That's the goal. <laughs> so yes, absolutely. Well, on that note, thanks again for listening, everybody. Send us your email questions, uh, brew crew review podcast with an S at gmail.com and give us a follow on Twitter where we post uh Daily updates, uh, try to get some history to you, try to get some Brewers birthdays to you, and then uh, stuff on the current team, uh, uh, do some do some game blogging as well. So uh, follow us on there, Brook Review 1 on Twitter, and we'll look forward to uh, interacting with you this week. Yeah, we might, actually so, uh, do, with- um, we might actually take Hall of Shame candidates and then do like a little bit of round robin based on the, the candidates that we have. And <laughs> duck so many new this that's year. Right. Yeah, that, that, that's right. Well, I, I am as well. And uh, – and yeah, we'll we'll be sure to get to your questions one of these weeks as well. And um, I did hear, as I sent you in a text, I did hear um, back from Jose Hernandez in this past week. This past week, so um, and then Craig's favorite Ned Yost as well. So yeah, wow, we, real uh, high uh, Yeah. So yeah, very nice. All right, sounds good. Well, uh, well thanks again for doing a good week. Let's, let's, let's do it. All right. Well, thanks, Scott. Thanks, Chad. Thanks, uh, Craig. Thanks, our anonymous source, Tom Carter, and uh, our colleague, Tom Wadricourt, for a great show. Uh, and we'll uh, look forward to talking to you all again later on this week and uh, next weekend as well. So in the meantime, stay classy, Wisconsin, and go Brewers. Go Brewers. Thanks for listening to the Brew Crew Review. Go Brewers. Dun, 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 dun.